Hello everyone, hope you're well. Jules here, the big bad final boss from WhatCulture.com. And I want to talk to you today, each and every one of you budding adventurers, about tutorial levels. After all, how can you expect to take on the shine of my Chrome Dome special without first learning the button to cover your eyes? Now, tutorial levels are usually looked at with the same disdain that my parents do when they catch one of these videos. I mean, something they wish they could just leave behind and just skip through. And for the most part, it's understandable. I mean, a lot of tutorial stages are so hand-holding that I want to yell stranger danger and are usually quite boring as clearly the devs are saving the best bits for later. Yet that doesn't mean that there aren't some games that go above and beyond when it comes to teaching you the ropes, so let's celebrate these today. I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com and these are 10 video games with insanely brilliant tutorial levels. Number 10. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines if you've not had the pleasure to play this very strange, campy, and violent game, then I fully recommend it, as it's so self-aware of the vampire mythology it presents that it becomes an utter B-movie joy. And it hits this tone straight off the bat when you engage in the game's tutorial mission, provided by the ever-charming and quite possibly slightly smelly Smiling Jack. Now, what Jack actually tasks you with doing is very standard. Go take out a dude here, sneak over there, magic skills, etc, etc. However, it's the way way in which he discloses this tutorial and your responses to it that makes it so engaging. As you go through the motion, Smiling Jack is always there with a quip, a smarmy line, or even just to punch a sabbat so hard that he flies about 50 foot down a goddamn alleyway, and your responses range from being blissfully unaware to downright universal horror movie silly, like requesting a cape now that you're a vampire, for instance. And if that wasn't enough, Smiling Jack might actually sound familiar, and that's because it's John DiMaggio providing the voice, and when you've got effectively Bender and Marcus Phoenix guiding you through something, well, it's going to be great regardless, isn't it? Number 9. Portal 1 and 2 now, excuse me for putting two games in one entry, but seriously, the Portal games have a brilliant approach to teaching the player how to get to grips with them. Now, if you're being really cheeky, you could argue that Portal 1 is a tutorial up until the 19th stage, as it's continually teaching you new things before it famously goes off the rails. After all, that's where the testing ends, and arguably the real narrative of the game begins. However, if we're going for personal preference, then for me, it has to be Portal 2, mainly because of the ways in which it makes what would normally be mundane, utterly memorable. After looking up and down and staring at some art for your mental well-being, Wheatley busts you out of your room and asks you to communicate with him. Yet, by pressing the button prompt shown on the screen, you jump instead of speak, which highlights the ridiculous adventure you're about to embark on. It's a testament to the designers that they managed to turn even a tutorial segment into a highlight of the second game, and managed to make the line, say, Apple, another brilliant and often quoted sample here in the office. Number 8. Spider-Man 2 if there's one thing that many superhero fans can actually agree on, it's that the Spider-Man 2 video game might well be one of the best, and say it with me kids, of all time! And with good reason too. It had a phenomenal sense of scope and scale, an engaging storyline which managed to hit all of the highs of the second film that it was based on, and lest we not forget, because its tutorial level was utterly brilliant. And that's down to one man. No, not Spider-Man, but Bruce Campbell. Now, Juicy Bruce has quite the connection to the Sam Raimi film trilogy, appearing in cameo form for all three films and also lending his vocals to some of the video games that came out around the time. But for us though, Spider-Man 2 is the best, because as he walks you through how to web, he does so in such a sarcastic and jibing manner. After telling you how to jump, he then tells you to jump in a lake, and after giving you the general gist of movement, he'll literally tell you to go away. I tell you, I'd sit through an entire seminar delivered in this manner, just because with wit as dry as the Sahara Desert, it makes just about anything enjoyable. Number 7. Star Wars The Force Unleashed I mean, come on, how could this list be made and not pay reference to this brilliant opening sequence? This is the ultimate form of power fantasy, as this over-the-top and brutally evil tutorial casts you in the black burned bacon suit of none other than Darth Vader as he stuffs his saber into mounds of hairy meat with such fury that you think that we were watching that porno me and your mum made, which was called Suck My Ewok Cock. It sold 4 million copies in Bangladesh. Also, that's my Wumper list. 
Honestly, I had a smile from ear to bold ear playing this, as this section allows you to not only get to grips with the controls, but also the many Wookiees trying desperately to stop you, cleaving them in two, shocking them to death, throwing them a country mile, all leave you feeling utterly empowered. Sure, it is a bit of a sting to have all this stripped back in the next section, but it importantly conveys something special. It teaches you about power and sets up your pursuit of this power in the coming levels. Tasty. Number 6. Modern Warfare 2 now, hands up, I absolutely love the majority of the Call of Duty campaigns, and I'm actually a little bit gutted that Activision are slowing down on delivering these experiences. It's especially cutting when you play through the single-player campaign to Modern Warfare 2, as that managed to blend so many different action set pieces into a gripping narrative about secret wars and betrayal that it was utterly fascinating. Even the tutorial level was brilliant. Things start off a bit slow, having you just shoot down a range at some static targets, but just as you think that this is all that there was Will be, the game shifts gears and tasks you with an assault course that is so fun that you'd honestly replay it again and again in the Spec Ops mode just to get that elusive golden run. It's a section that tests your basic skills the first time round, but then when you return, can push you to breaking points as you try to nail those perfect shots. It's simple arcade bliss and the perfect way to usher you into the world of Modern Warfare 2. Number 5. Dark Souls Arguably, this is one of my favorite tutorial areas ever put into a video game, as I feel from a game design point, it creates a perfect balance between teaching the player what to do and acting as an exam of that knowledge, which prepares them for what's to come. In terms of layouts, offering up weak enemies of specific attack styles complete with big, chunky prompts on what to do when makes sure that the players can learn the basics in isolated and therefore safe sections. Then, it completely inverts expectations with the sudden arrival of of the Asylum Demon. Now, if you're a tough cookie, you can deck this giant dickhead with the hilt of your sword, which does add another layer of challenge, but if you're not, then you can duck out of this demon's way and proceed with the tutorial. It's amazing that in a game that doesn't hold your hand so much as it cuts it off for trying, has such a robust and memorable opening level. Love it. Number 4. Super Metroid Super Metroid is a near-perfect example of gameplay telling a story. Through its creepy corridors and alien-infested vents, you'll find moments where the game doesn't take you aside to tell you what's going on, instead it shows you through action or its environments. The introduction is a perfect example of this because it informs the player of the game's core messages, that they will experience isolation but also danger around every corner. After letting the player get used to the jumping mechanics, you enter a room with a single Metroid on the ground. There's no HUD popping up to tell you what to do. Instead, all you get is a bloody big boss fight and then the moment this is over, an evacuation alarm telling you to flee the area. This is in the game's first five minutes and acts as a trial by fire. If you make it out of this section, then you feel absolutely pumped and ready to take on the main game. And the best thing is, is that the game teaches you combat, evasion and platforming within this set piece in a manner that by the time it's over, you are ready to bring the fight to whatever gets in your way. Number 3. Far Cry Blood Dragon the moment you boot up Far Cry Blood Dragon, it immediately sets the tone of the DLC to deep fried cheese. With its static image intro piece complete with crotch crab and its scrolling 80s menu, you can just tell that this is going to be a game with tongue firmly planted in its cyber cheek. Case and point the introductory moments, which take the rather boring and usually frustrating checklist of look over here, move over here, grab that, why are you sticking that in there, and adds a lovely dose of humor to the mix. With each of the witty and downright stupid messages that pop up, you get an even more frustrated response from Rex Power Cult, the game's protagonist. But it doesn't stop there, as it turns out that even in this future dystopia of… 2007, it isn't desolate enough to avoid a good old bit of product shilling every once in a while, and you'll catch sight of sponsored messages throughout the section. So yeah, in short, thanks Kobayashi Lubricant, you are keeping my life lubricated. Number 2. DMC Devil May Cry Yes, I originally hated this thing along with half the populace thanks to just how much Dante was changed and how it felt like the death of a franchise, but in light of DMC5 getting the series back on track in the best way possible, 2013 spin-off with an indie soul is more than worth a shot. Why? Because it has style up the mundus, putting you slap bang in the middle of the action with a sequence of fights that introduces you not only to Dante's extended combos, but that this version of DMC takes place between the real world and a purgatorial state called Limbo, Ninja Theory have a blast with the game's level design and enemies. 
enemies. As Dante retrieves his pistols from a dangling bra and his coat from atop a ferris wheel, gameplay peppers the entire sequence as a thumping metal soundtrack from Combi Christ keeps everything moving. It was a hard sell back in 2013, but retrospectively, Ninja Theory's DMC has so much confidence right out the gate that if you can just go with it, remains one of the best action games of the decade so far. And number one, Near Automata. It's very rare when a game like Nier Automata comes along and simply blows all expectations out of the water. And there might even be a fair few of you out there that don't see this as an actual tutorial at all, mainly because it can actually turn out to be one of the hardest areas of the game. The amalgamation of several different playstyles gels so well together that it's only after you've toppled the first boss do you realize how odd it was to play a side-scrolling shooter, a top-down hack and slasher, a platforming segment, and stylized action brawler all at once. This is Automata's true strength, the confidence in which it presents contrasting gameplay elements and how it packages them together in a way that makes the player feel accustomed to these moments when they crop up again and again and makes them feel incredibly powerful for beating each segment. Now, some people would argue that a tutorial that kicks you right back to the start if you fail is a right pain in the ass, but it seems to be in the similar camp to the Dark Souls entry I was talking about before. That difficulty and challenge are inherent in the title, and you have to prove yourself, even in tutorial form, and you can show that you can roll like a real android. It's utterly over-the-top action spectacle, but by the time it's over and the game opens out, you've got a lot of trial-by-fire knowledge under your belt and a brilliant first impression that will last for absolutely ages. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. And if you want to chat more about this, then you can go follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. As always, I have been Jules. You have been amazing, lovely, wonderful people. Check out the Teespring store that we've got down below. We opened up to try and help out with international shipping. Hope you're keeping yourself well, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!